Hello my YouTube friends, OBS Studio has a new update released or about to be released depending upon when this video comes out. It's version 27 and if it's not out yet you can download the beta version to try it out. But if that's the case just be aware that it is a beta and there may be a bug or two. This one in my opinion is totally worth it for an awesome new stinger transition feature that allows you to create this. Today I'm going to show you how to do it using free software. So let's get to it! My analytics say that 80% of the folks watching my content are not subscribed. Am I doing something wrong? Well let me know in the comments. But if you are interested in tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better YouTuber or a live streamer, subscribe to the channel. And click that bell so you don't miss any new content. To create this stinger, I'm going to use some stock footage from Envato Elements. You may be able to find the footage you need out there for free, but I find Elements to be a cheap and easy way to find stock footage and assets from my videos and even better I never have to worry about copyright strikes now I just go in here and I type fire ring and I get a few different options no more endless searching for assets and always top quality there this is the one I'll be using I just download it and if you want to check out Envato elements for yourself there is a link in the description trust me it's worth every penny no more endless searching and no risk of copyright strikes and it's really pretty cheap. We're going to create this stinger in DaVinci Resolve. If you aren't familiar with DaVinci Resolve, it's a free, full-featured video editing software. There's also a link in the description for this so you can download it and follow along with me. That's absolutely the best way to learn. So now let's hop into DaVinci Resolve. So the first thing I'm going to do is go into DaVinci Resolve and create a new project. You can call this project whatever you want. I'm going to call this Alpha Transition Stinger and click Create. And now here in DaVinci Resolve we are gonna go into the edit tab down here on the bottom and what I want to do first is also go and set up my project settings so I want this to be 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames per second because that's what I stream at if you stream at 60 frames per second or at a different resolution you're gonna want to set it up that way now that our project set up we're gonna go ahead and drag in our flame file this is the one that uh, I downloaded from Envato elements and it asks if we're gonna change the frame rate because the frame rate is different on the file and I don't want to change it I want it to be 30 frames per second so I'm gonna select don't change if you select change here and your video file is 60 frames per second or 120 it's going to change that you don't really want that you want it to be exactly the same as what you're streaming at the next thing I want to do is adjust the length of this clip for a stinger it only needs to be a few seconds long you can see this clip is actually 25 seconds long we definitely don't need it to be that long I'm thinking somewhere right around four seconds is more than long enough for the clip and there we go so then I just grab the end here and I drag it over to our playhead and I'm gonna move the playhead to the very beginning and I'm just going to adjust my zoom to zero and then I'm gonna hit this little keyframe icon here in the right that little diamond thing adds a keyframe then I'm gonna go to the end of my composition and I'm going to go ahead and zoom all the way through the ring and this adds another keyframe so you can see when I play this it brings our fire ring right through the screen there it starts in the center and goes all the way out until it engulfs the whole screen. And that's perfect. That's exactly what we're looking for. So the next thing I want to do is right click in our files area and create a new fusion project. And I want this to be the same length. So we're going to make it four seconds and we want our frame rate to be 30 or the same as our project. So I'm going to click create there. And then what I'm going to do is drag this clip up and our fusion composition is going to go underneath that. And then I'm just going to right click on our fusion composition and select open in fusion page and here we go we've got our media out for our fusion page we're gonna click here and it creates a background since I had my media out selected it creates it after that and we don't want that so we want to unselect it and do it again and there we go now we have a background here you can see our background color is black and I want it to be white so I'm gonna drag that all the way up and then I'm just gonna connect it to the media out so we can see it and there we go and I'm going to add an ellipse to it and you can see this just creates a circle right in the middle and that's exactly what we're looking for now I want to create another background 
background here. We're gonna drag this down to the bottom. You can see this background is black, which is perfect. So we're gonna drag our white background on top of our black background to create the merge node. And then we're gonna connect the merge node to the media out. So now here you see we have the black background and then our white circle. And that's pretty much exactly what we're looking for. So now I just wanna add a transform in here after the background and before the merge. And this gives us the ability to adjust the size of our little white circle. So I'm gonna go to the beginning of our composition and I'm going to set that size all the way so we can't see it. So pretty much all the way to zero. And I'm going to go ahead and add a keyframe there by clicking this little diamond. Then I'm gonna to go to the last frame of our composition and we're going to make sure that it covers the entire screen. And of course that adds another keyframe there. And we want to just make sure it's just off the screen there. There we go. And then when I click play, you can see that that does basically the same as our fire ring does. And we want this white to be the center of our fire ring. So now we're going to go back into our nodes here and we're going to take a look. And you can see you can't see it. So I'm going to change the composite mode of our fire ring to add. And now we can see the size of our white circle. We're not going to use it this way. We just want to be able to actually see the white circle so we can get it lined up properly. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click again and go and open that fusion page. And what I want to do is adjust the transform so it fits. So we'll go back here into the edit page. And what I want to do is I'm going to take the fire ring all the way up so it touches the very top and very bottom of our frame. And that should make it easy for us to line up our white circle. So then I'm going to open our fusion page again. And I'm just going to go ahead and adjust our white circle so it just touches the top and bottom of our frame. And now we can see that our white circle covers up everything. You can just barely see the outer orange edge of our fire ring. And that's perfect. That's exactly what we're looking for. So now I'm just going to change this composite mode um, down here. You can mess around with this to see if you can see it better. But I didn't find any other way that would show the fire over top of it. And it doesn't matter really. We just want to make sure that it's about as good as it can get. This kind of shows a little bit, but it doesn't really work properly. A screen is the one that kind of just gives you that little bitty touch of the fire ring on the outside. And that's exactly what we're looking for. We just want that circle to encompass the inside of our fire ring. And we're going to change this back to normal and we're going to go ahead and select our fire ring and we're going to go into our colors. And we're going to use this color picker here and we're going to select the black from the background of our fire ring. And you can see it turns our fire to white. Now I'm going to right click and I'm going to add a node and I'm going to right click and I'm going to add an alpha output. It puts this little blue dot over here. And then I'm going to connect this the top to the yellow and the bottom to the blue. And we're going to connect these two nodes. And there you see it basically makes a copy. So I want to right click on that and go to reset node. And now you can see that we see our white circle in the center, which is exactly what we're looking for. So now if I go back into the edit mode and I scroll through, you can see there we go. We have exactly what we're looking for, but it's kind of messy. I don't like how the black is not totally removed from this. So we're going to have to go back into color and we're going to edit our mask a little bit here. And to do that, we're going to go down here into the bottom right and we're going to use the matte finesse. So I'm going to select that, the one with the mask, and I'm going to just adjust this. We can move our denoise and our clean black. And you can look over in our image on the left hand side and see what this is doing. It's cleaning up all those edges. And you can just play around with this until you get all of it all cleaned up. And that actually looks looks pretty good now. That's very clean. That's going to give us exactly what we're looking for. And we can play this right here so we can see what it looks like. And that looks pretty good. You see we get a little bit of remnant at the very maximum of the zoom, but there isn't a whole heck of a lot you can really do about that. We're going to go back into edit and now we want to just kind of watch it and make sure it works exactly as we intended to. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and disable the video track for our fusion composition. That's that white background. So now when I play it, we just have the fire ring and we know that we have all of the alpha and stuff there. So we're going to go over here into the little rocket ship. This is to export it. And we're going to call this file name flame alpha. And we're going to make sure we have our location set up where we want our file to go. And we want to make sure the format is QuickTime. Codec is uncompressed. Our type is BGRA 8-bit. Then we want to make sure it's 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames per second. And we want to export the alpha added to the render queue and then render all. And this renders out our little fire ring with the alpha, which is really important. You'll see why later. Now I'm going to go back into edit and I'm going to turn on our fusion
kitchen composition and turn off our fire ring composition. So now you can see we just have the black with the white circle and I'm gonna go into our exporter and we can change this. We don't need the alpha so it can be quick time and then H264. You just wanna verify that everything else is correct. We'll change our file name to flame mask and then we wanna add it to the render queue and we're gonna render this one out as well. And I'm gonna save the project and close this down. The next thing I wanna do is go into our shutter encoder. This is gonna re-encode our alpha file so it's nice and small for us. This is totally free and there is a link in the description if you wanna check it out. Then I'm gonna click browse and I'm gonna go ahead and load up our flame alpha file and click open. And the function here is going to be VP9. You can see this creates a WebM file. And as long as your source is the same as where you got your file, you should be fine. We're gonna click max quality and then enable alpha channel. And we're gonna go ahead and run this. And this takes a few minutes, but once it's done, we're gonna go ahead and go into our OBS. And now we wanna select Stinger and we're gonna call this Stinger Flames and click OK. And now we're gonna select our video file. And so this video file is going to be that WebM file that we just created. So we just have to browse to that file and it should be Flame Alpha VP9 and we're gonna open that up. Now if we scroll down to the bottom, we see Preview Transition and you can see it kinda of does what we want but it automatically switches over the scene right away. And we don't want it to do that. We want to use the track mat. The track mat's gonna tell it when to switch the scenes. So we're gonna click this use track mat button. We're gonna drop this down and we're gonna select separate file. And then we're going to click browse and we're going to browse to the file that we created as our mask. This one's called flame mask and we're gonna click open. And now if we go down and we preview our transition, you can see that B comes in through the center of our fire ring and A stays until the fire ring goes all the way through. And you can see how this looks. It looks just absolutely freaking awesome. And it's really not that hard to make. In fact, it's really easy to make. Now you can add audio to these and all kinds of other things if you wanted, if you wanted it faster. That's all stuff that you can modify in DaVinci Resolve, you know, to create a faster file or to add audio. And then you just bring it in that way. This one is just so cool. And if you wanna see how to create another Stinger using DaVinci Resolve, you should check this video out right here. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. It's totally free. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.